The man I'm going to introduce you, I would say, is a man on a mission. I'm not sure anyone knows yet what his mission will be and what it will achieve, but I expect only great things from him. Please welcome Steve Robbins. Excuse my voice. Chantal's voice and Veronique's students and school will help put my presentation into context. My hero's name is Daniel Kingsbury. Ten years ago, when Daniel was 20, my redactrice en chef for the magazine Plaisir de Vivre which I published for 25 years, suggested that we do an issue with the theme of wood, bois. We both agreed that we needed to take some time to find something meaningful and inspirational to attach to this issue. It came to me while camping with my sons. Trees, trees. We will plant a tree for every page that we print. That was the beginning of my environmental journey with Daniel. What does this have to do with sound? Sound through music can heal, motivate, educate, and unify. Music has been a primary call to positive action for centuries. Universally, we sing together to overcome challenges, effect change, and become better as a people. Music evokes emotion and awareness in a positive way. Jimi Hendrix said, music doesn't lie. If there is something that can be changed in the world, then it can only happen through music. Let me share a story with you, Daniel's story. Daniel co-founded an organization called the Jellyfish Project, or JFP. The JFP is a not-for-profit, nonpartisan educational initiative that offers a unique and powerful presentation in high schools, focused on generating awareness amongst youth about ocean sustainability, climate change, and environmental stewardship. Music is the key to this program. Without music and the respect of the musicians, we couldn't make a connection to the students. Imagine yourself back in school, in high school, with an old teacher on a blackboard in a stuffy room, trying to learn something or being in an auditorium with a rock band performing to you, uh, torn jeans, messy hair, some tattoos, and loud music. Who, who's going to be more inspirational to you? Well, our presentation consists of three equally important components. First, there's the show, the, the musical, the concert, which lasts about 30 minutes, and that's followed by the very important TED-type talk on the environment. And lastly, we have follow-up ta tasks and actions for the students to do at home and in school. The Jellyfish Project creates a desire for learning through a stimulating and engaging experience. We give tools and options on how to become actively involved in healing the environment. We offer a strong emphasis on tangible solutions, giving students the knowledge of responsible consumerism, renewable energy, green career options, and the power of the internet and social media to affect global change and action. Through the power of music and live performance, students are brought into the environmental conversation. 
and are given information on, a, on how to become active participants in the sustainability movement. Among some of our many important allies and partners are the David Suzuki Foundation, Al Gore's Climate Reality Project, and Art Starts, in which we are a, a feature presenter. Uh, the Jellyfish Project evolved, and we started something called the Jellyfish Action Project. And this is where um, schools give students, each student goes home with about a 35-page document that they share with their family, and it's a, it's a home eco-audit that they go through carefully. Um, they ask their parents questions about uh, insulation in the home, how we use electricity, um, what sort of chemicals are in our cleaners, how we recycle things. And um, uh, the, the information is brought back to the school, collated, and is sh shared with the students, the rest of the school, and the broader community. And two months later, it's given again to the same students to go back home and ask the same questions. And this gives us measurable results and uh, gives us an opportunity to see the students' progress in this. And um, it, right now it's in front of BC, British Columbia curriculum, uh, hopefully for, for approval. Another uh, important cornerstone of the Jellyfish Project is called the Jellyfish from the Stage Program. And this is where we, um, we engage other bands that aren't able to partake in student, student and school presentations. We ask them to, uh, in, their, in their performances in clubs or bars or, or festivals, to take a few moments to talk about the environment. We help them, we give them a, a script, we give them tips, we give them content, and um, we help them plant the seeds of consciousness to amplify uh, environmental awareness in the mainstream. And I encourage you, please, to reach out to me uh, to help find creative ideas to broaden the JFP sound in Quebec. Um, last winter, the Jellyfish Project performed at six schools in Montreal one of which was Dawson College. And I had a conversation with a young girl, the president of the Dawson College uh, Environmental Club. And she was fascinating. I, I asked her, I said, why are you involved with this? What, what motivated you to, to uh, join, join the movement? And this was her answer. Three years earlier at her high school, she saw the Jellyfish Project perform. And it was from that day on, at that moment, that she chose to walk a green path. In five years, we've presented to over 75,000 students. Imagine all the green paths that have been chosen to be walked upon. It's wonderful, it's, it's amazing how strong this movement will become. Daniel, believe music to be the most powerful vehicle for large-scale large societal change. And he worked ardently as the co-founder and executive director of the Jellyfish Project. He ensured that the Jellyfish Project would reach its potential and earn its place as an essential piece of the environmental movement. When he was in high school, at the age of 16, Daniel started the Music for Youth Endowment Fund. And uh, grants from this fund went to less fortunate children whose passion was music but needed help in realizing their, their passion and following their musical endeavors. It's now called the Daniel Kingsbury Music for Youth Endowment Fund. Daniel, the song catcher, environmentalist, and activist, passed away on June 1st, 2015. Daniel was my nephew. At Daniel's celebration for life ceremony, 
500 fir saplings, baby trees, were donated to friends and loved ones who traveled great distances to pay homage to a great man. Daniel's trees will grow tall. The most recent edition of Plaisir de Vivre, which may be our last, shows a cover that's very meaningful to me. I selected this cover because of the many stories that it tells. Maybe it resonates with you as well. Just as the trees encountered an obstacle, and regardless of their challenges, their strong upward growth did not let the ceiling block their path. Now they are thriving in the light. On the Daniel Kingsbury Legacy Facebook page, my son Andrew wrote, I always thought that I would be walking in Daniel's shadow until I realized I was really walking in his light. Daniel was a beautiful soul whose passion, talents, kindness, and dedication to the environment inspired us all. Daniel wrote, I draw an arrow of intention from the quiver of infinite possibility and fire it deep into the fabric of my reality. That final arrow that Daniel cast still has yet to land, and so we don't know the final chapter of Daniel's story. What we do know is that Daniel's legacy will continue. Daniel is my hero, and that was my story. <laughs>